let's watch Jeff. Jeff! Am I under arrest? For now. I'm under arrest? Yeah, I'll, I'll explain everything, but before I talk, before I explain myself to you, before we talk to each other, I need to read your rights, okay? What am I under arrest for? Well, like I said, I need to read your rights first. Obviously, the charge is robbery, okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll What's the first mistake being made here? Chat? He is talking. There's no lawyer. I'll explain it. I'm under arrest for robbery. You are, but let me read your rights real quick, okay? And then I'll explain it all to you. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Let me do that real fast. Mm -hmm. All right, Jeff. Can you it's okay. He says nothing. It doesn't matter. He's already said something. Read with me. Just read in your head, okay? Before we ask you any questions, you must understand that what your rights are. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. Does that make sense? You've probably heard these before, haven't you? Wow. Does that make sense? Do you understand your rights? Oh, he's learning. Do you understand your rights, Jeff? He's learning! Yes or no? Do you understand? Do you understand what I read you? Do you comprehend what I read you? He's... He's going... A level beyond! Jeff, I'm just talk to you and figure out what happened and move you on out of here and at least sell them. So do you understand the rights I read to you? How can one man say so little? If you got something that says you didn't do this robbery, this is your chance to talk to us. Okay, good cop. <laughs> uh, no, usually I'm the prick. You look like the prick. <laughs> this is Jeff. Jeff is a heroin addict and has been for the last 14 years. He is six foot five, weighs 153 pounds, Jesus. and has now found himself in the unfortunate circumstance of being charged with armed robbery. This is in the state of Georgia, so if found guilty, they will render him the minimum term of 10 years without parole, up to the maximum term of life in prison. Jeff has been through the system multiple times over, and he will know that if indeed found guilty, his sentence will be considerably longer than the minimum 10 years due to his previous convictions. Jeff, do you understand your rights, yes or no? I'm, I'm not asking if you want to talk to me at this point. I just want to know, do you understand what I read to you? Uh, so am I under arrest? Yes, you're under arrest. I'm getting back to the cell. I don't yeah. talk to you, motherfuckers. Okay, there you go. You going to mail pop it open or you need me to? Oh, Jeff has become somewhat of a cult figure in the domain of interrogation footage. His recognition seems to have grown through his own popularity, as opposed to the notoriety of his crimes, like most others. Conveying the exact reasoning behind this can be tricky, as the interest in this character will no doubt vary by the individual. Yet we found the most collective reason can be explained through a single pop culture reference. The anti-hero. While the concept is timeless, the actual term was created through the realm of modern cinema. There's a diverse number of characters passing through the decades right. that fit the criteria. Yet perhaps the most textbook example could be the protagonist from the 2003 feature Bad Santa, a middle-aged man simply known as Willie. This is a character We're that lies, cheats, steals, this. swears at children, drinks an inconceivable amount of alcohol, and is generally extremely unpleasant to every yeah. single person he comes across. The MCA can't get through this. Here, Jimmy. It's Santa. Right. Earthquake! I'm on my fucking lunch break, okay? On paper, this is an extremely unlikable individual, yet for some reason, we root for him while following his story. Anti-heroes are flawed, as are we. Their moral complexity mirrors our own, and just like us, they are learning and growing as they move along the path of life. Their mistakes make us think of our mistakes, and perhaps the reason we root for their redemption is the reflection of ourselves rooting for our own. Yeah. So you might be curious about the contrast between the anti-hero and the villain. One we embrace and relate to, while the other we despise and detach from. Both are driven by selfish motives. Unless you're gay, in which case it's near guaranteed that you're going to fall in love with the villain of virtually every piece of media.
motivations, yet our emotional response differs between them. The reason for this, while not necessarily obvious, is a relatively simple formula. The anti-hero must have a glimmer of humanity alongside a noticeable vulnerability. This is what allows the viewer to truly connect with a character. It allows us to forgive them when they are unethical, but admire them when they are noble. It allows them to be angry, cowardly, and greedy, but also cheerful, brave, and empathetic. Who the fuck is Thurman? Is that you? Is your name Thurman? Yeah. Thurman Merman? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Unlike the clean-cut, one-dimensional hero of mainstream culture, an anti-hero is not only more yeah. realistic, but far more likely to resonate with the viewer. They resemble ourselves, and remind us not only Man, of the, the ambiguous guys morality really do of like existence, but also the possibility of redemptive change. With relation to Jeff, while many of us can't relate to the feeling of being addicted to heroin for well over a decade... Wait, did I slow down the audio or something? I feel like I'm getting the... I... I did? Oh my god, I did! What button did I hit to do that? I'm so sorry. We can... Now to last the whole stream. Feeling of sadness. While we may not be able to put ourselves directly in the shoes of an addict, we can somewhat relate to the adversity that comes with it. Not to mention the incredible magnitude of the situation he is going through in this video. How he responds to this very moment is quite literally the precursor to his entire future. He is at a crossroad moment in life, where on one side is the possibility of hope, and on the other side is the outright guarantee of despair. The oh. long-term path he goes down will be the consequences of the short-term choices he makes. Okay, oh. we're settling on normal. All of which have to I didn't know that was a feature, sorry. He judged and decided on while going through the early stages of heroin withdrawal. I need methadone. You need methadone? Yeah, you need that methadone. I don't have any. Do you have a medication for it, or I mean, a prescription for it? Or? No. What do you need methadone for? Because I'm a fucking junkie, and you guys, I can't get no methadone. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go through withdrawal here a minute. Where do you usually get your methadone from? I don't get it. I get heroin. How long have you been using heroin? Long time, buddy. What are you trying to talk to me about here? Talk to you about what happened last night. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. Either you're in a bad, bad set of circumstances or you went and committed an armed robbery last night. Yeah, right? I'm in a shitty... Uh, wrong place at wrong time, obviously. I didn't commit no fucking armed robbery. All right, then let's talk about this. Let's, let's I don't, not keep nothing, up I don't the talk to the police, man. I think it's in your best interest to. Yeah, I don't you're, talk you're to the police. Here. Okay, but he is talking. He is talking, though. He's still making the mistake. No! The system, buddy, I know, I know you works. have. I know you have, You're Jeff. not my friend. I'm not your friend. You're bro. trying to fucking get me. Or you're no, trying I'm not to, trying to get. All you're trying to get is some fucking stupid ass fucking confession, and you're not going to get one. Jeff, I'm not going to get a confession out of you for nothing. Exactly, because and I didn't I'm do not trying to get a confession out of you. Okay, I'm going to tell you, I ain't commit no armed robbery, and y'all ain't got no fucking evidence saying I did. Let me go. All you did is find me sitting in my buddy's house because my fucking buddy's dog's going ape shit. I go outside. There are cops everywhere. And they spotlight me. They say, come here. I say, what's up? They search me. They ain't find nothing. What's let up? Let me read this. No. Read yes. Because I'm not going to sign it. You don't have to sign it. So let me read it for you. Okay? I'm not signing nothing. You don't have to sign it. Let me read it. You already read it to me earlier. I know we did. But I'm going to read it to you again. Thanks for the coat. You're welcome. Before we ask any questions, you must understand what your rights are. And here we have our glimmer of humanity. Jeff extends his gratitude and recognition of the small favor the detective has done for him. There is no return benefit for Jeff giving thanks to his adversary, meaning there is an element of selflessness and grace in the act. There may be considerable emphasis on the glimmer of humanity here, but all we need is a glimmer to know that it's at least in there. Yeah, the right to remain silent. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, a lawyer will be provided for you. If you decide Jerks to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to the lawyer. Do you understand the rights I've explained to you? No. Oh. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what happened last night. 
Plain and simple. Your your side of the story. I'm not talking to you. I'm uh, All right. This is I, what I, I don't understand. What, I, you, I know, but this is what I don't understand, what? Jeff. You were sitting there talking just like you were ready to sit here and tell me what happened last night, and then all of a sudden I read that to you, and you screw screwed. I ain't talking to you. I want a lawyer. I don't understand that. What what Cause changed? Because I, cause I, the... cause I told you what. I already told you what happened. You didn't. How didn't I? You didn't tell me what happened last night. How didn't but, I just tell you what happened? But now you He's still talking. talking. I can't talk to you because you've asked for an attorney. Lawyer. So, okay, that's fine. But... I will tell you right now, you're still on a hold for a robbery. I know. I don't know why I need a fucking lawyer because, uh, obviously, I didn't do nothing. And obviously, you guys know I didn't do nothing because I've been arrested for the same bullshit before, and you guys don't interview me this much. So, wham, bam, thank you for the coke. Put me back in the cell. What's that? Just All right. I know we did this twice, but I gotta do it again every time, okay? Before I ask you any questions, I gotta read your rights. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and sign there. Let me take your gaffle off. Look, you're not signing nothing. Okay, sign. you don't have to sign anything. You understand your rights, though, right? Yeah. That's all I need is a verbal yes? Yeah. Okay. What's this coat gonna be here? Or is that just a fairy it, tale? It's coming. He's getting there right now. He'll be here in about two minutes. Just to watch the sewer machine. Uh, they do that too. If you ask for a lawyer, they'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, you know, just <laughs> yeah, we'll get right to it, dude. Hey, don't worry, man. Yeah, yeah. Any minute now, they'll do if they'll put it back as far as they can. If you say I want a lawyer, I'm invoking the fifth. I want a lawyer, and then you just shut up. You just shut. You don't say anything. If you want to say anything, you know what you say? You say lawyer. Okay, that's what you say. All right, like that scene of uh, like that like that scene of um, Mike from Better Call Saul, or was it Breaking Bad? No, I think it was Breaking Bad. Still copyright? Yeah. Nah, Saul's already showed up in this scene. Never mind. It's good. Mm hmm. Uh. I have enough evidence. Like what? Of your armed robbery, okay? But, you know, if, if you're saying you didn't do it, you need to give me your side of the story. I didn't do it. Okay, well, give me your side of the story. You got to I mean, convince me, because I got a lot of evidence. I got a lot of physical evidence. Well, like what? Name the physical well, I don't need to, I, why should I tell you that? I mean, you haven't been, you haven't been helpful to me at all. You don't, because I don't believe Dude, I hate, I hate cops, dude. Dude, we have so much evidence on you, evidence on you, bro. Dude, there's so much. We have so much evidence. Oh, yeah, like what? <laughs> Why would I tell you? Haha, <laughs> you tell me, dude. Haha. <laughs> you got any evidence? There, there, there's only a couple pieces of evidence I'm missing. Name them. What's that? Name them. Why, why would you do that? You haven't helped me out a lot. You give me a little bit, I give you a little bit. We go back and forth. I give you one of my piece of evidence, now give me a little something. You know, I know anything I say here can and will be used against me. Sure, but anything you say here, I can also tell your you know, your parole officer that what? you helped me out. That doesn't mean dick. But there's no way. I didn't do it. There's no way. How drunk were you? Were you drunk? No, I was pretty sober. So you're in your right mind. You remember everything about the night, right? Yeah. So you couldn't have done something not remembered. You couldn't have gone and robbed the place and not remembered? Fuck, no. Okay, so you would remember if you robbed the place. Yeah. So I'm willing to go to the prosecutor. I'm willing to go to the parole officer and say, this guy's a good guy. He helped me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Hey. I know you don't want to go back to jail, right? Back to prison. Well, fuck. It looks like I am if, if and you're going to charge me with some bogus shit. You guys don't... I mean, what What do you got, really? That I, I was at a buddy's house and I happened to come outside because you guys were fucking swarming the area and they which fucking... Door, which door did you come out of? I came out of the uh, front door. You know what? I'm not saying that, man. I'm done, man. Fuck this. The only reason I came up here is to get a fucking coke. Okay. You're not getting out. Oh, no. I, I just fucking got I just yeah you know what I knew you'd give me a coke to get me to talk I'm not talking but I drank the coke what are you gonna do come on shove your hand down my throat and get the coke back that's right you can't it's mine now can't finish it you can finish it make it quick 
I got things to do. I didn't promise you that. I said we'd see what happens. All right, like I said, this piece of shit. Make it quick. I got things to do. I didn't promise you that. I said we'd see what happens. This fucking. Right. Like I said, you haven't helped me out at all. Why should I help you out? I got you a soda. That's good enough. Jeff was released from custody just under 12 hours later. And that takes us to the final and perhaps the most important component of an anti-hero, the conclusion, which unfortunately in this particular case is unknown. The final outcome of this story will vary depending on the source, some with a happy ending, others a cautionary tale. One legend has it that Jeff got clean soon after his release and now works in the corporate marketing team for Coca-Cola, while another states that he was picked up the day after for the same charge and is now facing down a 15-year sentence in Georgia State Prison. If we go by the Hollywood formula, an anti-hero's actions throughout the course of their life are so drastic and single-minded the that they only ever lead to self hold the outcome of this particular story, as the theme of addiction is more than enough. Whether he goes to prison or not, Jeff will either manage to get clean and rebuild his life, or he won't. He is headed for salvation or destruction no matter what. And that single concept can perhaps define Jeff. He's doing fine. He has a YouTube channel. Is that true? Somebody was linking that earlier, but I assumed that it was a troll. Is that true? S Syringe Music? And the, the, the channel banner is him? Oh, that looks like him. So are we, are we good? So, the video's title says that he's okay. The video's content gives me very little information. Hey, anti-hero, hope you're sober now. I'm still breathing. All right, he's still breathing, you know? And he's free. I, I, mean, I mean, he has to be. I don't think that was a prison car with prison car music. But then look at my shoes. <laughs> Just showing up unannounced to the prosecutor's office because I, uh, the note basically said due to the COVID-19 pandemic and complications that could arise, I shouldn't have to show up. And I don't think I should because uh, my defense could suffer because I live two hours away from where my tickets are. So what the fuck, man? They got to grant me that shit. Who's with me? And yeah, I, I fucking overdressed, so what? Okay, yeah. he's not actually a lawyer. It was a joke because he's dressed in a suit. Gotta fucking give him a preview of what, what's to come at court. You'd be surprised. People take you much, much more serious. Don't don't pay attention to my shoe because I didn't think I didn't think they'd see him. And they didn't. She wasn't even there, so I just left her a note. So I got all dressed up for nothing. He's got drip. Well, uh, he's out. That was just from two weeks ago. Where in the world is Jeff? Jeff, what are you doing? Is that? Did you? Did hey. you? Hey, your partner? Jeff, my man! That could be daughter, partner, I have no idea. Sister, I don't know. Just looking at some water, huh? Yeah, man! Woo! I like Jeff. I'm pro Jeff. I'm a Jeffist. Okay, I'm a I'm a I'm a Jeffite. Where he at though? I don't know. Does he know where he's at? Does he even know? Just wandering. 